Hi there. In the last video, we created an index action, which returns all of the books in the database. And we had that fully working. So we can move on to implementing another action. And I thought it would be interesting to do a create because there's a little bit more that goes on to be able to accept a post request, uh, update the, or sorry, create the database record, um, return the response, and also handle the case where um, it doesn't update successfully. So to start with, um, I need to create the new action in the controller. And last time we did that using um, Rails scaffold. So if you remember, I did uh, BIM Rails generate controller, um, blah, blah, blah. But uh, this time, all I really need is one more method. So I won't bother using the scaffold. So I can just do def create and we'll add some logic in here. The other thing we need to do is add a new root for this, um, this controller action. So if you remember, I can do bin rails roots. I can actually grep for um, book. So I do this quite a lot in, in larger projects where um, you don't want to see all of the roots because it's a bit overwhelming. So what you can do is uh, bin rails roots and then you can pipe it in and then you can grep for a specific term. So if I do that, it just returns the one root. So if I was to try and call this create action, um, I'd get a routing error. So I'm going to save that, jump over to the roots file and you can see I'm I'm using the the books resource, but I'm uh, narrowing it down to only index. So I'm going to turn this into an array and I can specify index and create. So now if I rerun the, ro the roots, now I get the, um, the create. And what you'll notice what you'll notice here, um, let me do that again. What you'll notice here is the the endpoint looks the same. It's slash books, but the difference is the the new controller that we've added is a post. So the idea is that we have different um, HTTP verbs. So when we're doing anything on the server, which is uh, not changing the state of the server, we can do get requests. So if we're listing a long list of books like this example, or we're getting the details of a specific book, we can use get requests for that because they um, can be performed again and again without changing any state on the server. This request, this is this um, new create action is going to be a post request because um, the, f the first time you perform the request, you're actually creating a new record. So you've changed the the state on the server forever, essentially. Um, okay, so that's a brief explanation of the roots. Um, okay, so. Let's go ahead now and try to implement this. Um, in fact, let me, let's first set up a curl request so that we can kind of get a test mechanism going. So to test this, I can do um, curl, um, I think I can do request post and um, 
so I'm calling localhost slash 3000 slash books and let's see what happens here I get no routing error making a post to book oh sorry it's books plural uh, yeah there we go so just to show you that again so I make a call request to books and um, I don't get a response but if I run it with dash V um, you can see I actually get a 200 response back which is just because we haven't added any logic here but that proves that the the curl mechanism uh, or, or the curl request sorry is is working so let's start to implement this now um, the so one thing we need to do is actually create the book so we can do that with book um, create and then we would pass in some params so we can say um, uh, what did we say that a book had had a title um, let's say Harry Potter one and an author JK Rowling now this would this this would work this would create a book um, in one in one go essentially the the problem is we want to handle the case where um, where this database insert works and also the case where it, where it doesn't work so there's kind of a a pattern in rails where you can say assign this to a variable so what we do is we assign this variable book and instead of doing a crate we do a new so what this will do is initialize the record um, but not save it to the database yet and what that allows us to do is check whether the the model is valid before we try and save it so now I can do if book.save and then I can do this if statement. So I can so I can say if the if the saving of the book record passes, then return a success response and uh, anything else that you want to return. If it doesn't work, then we know that there was an issue and we can return errors. So a good a good example of this would be let's say I make a call request to the, the endpoint but I don't specify a title we would probably want that to fail because we don't want books in our database that don't have titles so similar similar to I did on similar to what we did on line line three up here we would render um, a successful response and some JSON back so in this case I can actually render the whole book um, for create endpoints um, it's kind of personal preference but some some APIs tend to return no body back to the client so they'll just return a success status so you can assume that that record was created the other option is is like this to create to uh, actually return the object that was just created and then we also want to change the default uh, status code um, default 200 is uh, just a status ok but there's a more specific one that we should use when a record is successfully created and that's a 201 uh, but with rails you can just say status created so the next part is we need to handle the the failure case so here I can again do render JSON and I can call book dot errors um, and again I need to specify a status so 
what I probably want to return here is a 400 error. And um, so in this case, it's, it's likely that the request was properly formed, but the, the parameters were wrong. Um, and so unprocessable entity uh, is a good one to use. I believe that's 422. Uh, unprocessable entity. Yeah, 422. So it essentially means the the server kind of understands the request, but um, it wasn't able to, able to perform the requested action um, as desired. So you'll notice that we have this book dot errors, and that's built into Rails. So when a um, a model is invalid or the save fails for some reason, we can call dot errors and it will print out all of the validation errors. So in this case, we'd want if the if the title is uh, missing, then um, we should return that message back to the client. So if I go ahead and run this now with curl, let's see what happens. There we go, so we get a 201, so that works correctly. And you can see we get the response back, which means that record uh, was created in the database. Now, you've probably noticed that we've hard-coded the, um, the field names here, which isn't particularly useful. We want to allow the, the API caller to specify the title and the author that they want to create. And we can do that using um, Rails controller params. So I'm going to create them Okay, so to keep things simple, we can do it. Uh, we can we can do it like this. We can do params title params author. Um, that that works fine, um, but it's kind of a pain to have to. Um, pull out all of these individual parameters. So another way we can do that is by using Rails required params. So I'm going to um, create a private method and I'll call it book params. And I can do params. So this params um, method is made available by application controller. Um, and I can say require book and permit um, title and author. So what that will do is allow these parameters to be posted, um, but no others. And that's um, important for security because we don't want any model params to be posted um, you know, for example, we don't want people overriding the created at and updated at. Um, in this case, it's not hugely important, but if you imagine the case where you're creating a user, you don't want people people to be able to specify, say, whether they're an admin. Uh, so this is a important security feature. You wouldn't you wouldn't want to just pass in params like that. So now. What I need to do to get the, to make this work is uh, actually pass in the parameters as a JSON object. So I can do. So I believe I need to pass in a header. Um, which would be the content type. application JSON. And I've got the request as a post and oh, so then I need the data. So this is where I can specify the um, 
JSON uh, params. So I can say author, and let's give it a different one. Um, let's just say James. Not very good at uh, coming up with book authors. Um, then I need a password. Sorry, um, not a password. I need a um, title. Um, a book. So if I've um, written this curl request correctly, it should create a, um, a new book called a book with the author James. Let's see what happens. There we go. That's that seemed to work. Um, cool. So in the next video, I'll try to explain um, the status codes in a bit more detail. Um, and we'll also potentially look at um, this error case. Thanks for watching.